Hi, this is Lee with Crash Test Hobby. Uh, I want to demonstrate for you building techniques for building our 48 inch albatross and our 36 inch pelican trainers. It's great flying planes and easy to build. Cleaning off the foam there, applying hot glue to the angle, low temperature, and then raise the wing tip panel up to the angle set on the plans. Each plane is a little different, so double check the written instructions at our website. Fill any gaps that can be there and it gives a little reinforcement to add some glue to the angle. I like to use a soldering iron to melt a slot for the spar. You can also cut this out with a razor blade and scrape it out with a screwdriver if you'd like. Notice how the spars poke out the bottom of the wings. Then I just fill the slot with hot glue or Gorilla Glue and press the spar into place. When I'm using hot glue, I like to put a small layer over the top to help tie it in. People need planes that are a little stronger for carrying cameras and other things that they're doing with these. So putting a spar on the bottom directly under the top spar is, makes the wing incredibly strong. We've had over four pounds on the wing and it doesn't break. Trim the spars off and once again seal any gaps. You'll notice now that I'm filling the slots where the spars go with uh, glue in order to tie the wing tip at its right angle. You can use or use grill glue or hot glue to do this. You need to do both top and bottom and fill the slit that the spar goes through. Those spar the slits are pre-cut, so it helps you get your spars in without much trouble. Now this is our smaller 36-inch pelican wing. It has a different spar in it, so we thought in the instructions we had dedicate a little bit of time to it. It has a different height on it, so double check your instructions. Slide the spar through the slits on the wing. Then mark it so that you know where to do your cut. This is a flat carbon spar. It goes in a razor blade slit, so I'm cutting the uh, razor blade slit here that this will go into. Sand the spar, and I didn't show sanding the other spars, but uh, if you take the shine off them, they'll stick better. And then the flat carbon spar presses into the slit. Now in this particular case, it was off center. And so I went back, centered the spar. Now it's right. Get her uh, slid in to where it is. The spar is 20 inches on a 36 inch wing. That's baking soda that I'm putting into the slit. It helps the CA glue set uh, almost instantly. And that's the baking soda in my basting syringe. You can see top and bottom on that way. Now I'm filling the gaps on the end, both top and bottom, and I'm just using the hot glue to do that. But this is important that you get your wingtip angles at this point. Now rubber bands will tear through the leading and trailing edges here. We include tongue blades in the kits in order to uh, prevent rubber bands from tearing through. The glue that I'm using is household goop, amazing goop, plumber's goop, shoe goo. All of those glues will do this, but we're putting it on the leading and the trailing edge of the wing. It keeps the wing from tearing and small chunks of foam from getting popped out so easily. EPP foam is good in the first place because it won't crush, so if you do have a tear, it's easy to repair with just a hot glue gun or some goop. But this gives it some extra strength. On our elevator and our rudder, we use goop to make a hinge. I like to pin the elevator and the horizontal stab to a piece of cardboard. And the rudder and the vertical stab. Now I'm going to use the same glue, the goop, put a bead of the glue down the hinge line and spread it very thin. We've had several flyers get it too thick and it's 
too stiff of a hinge. It has to be spread thin. You can always add more, but it's hard to add to take it off once it's there. I'm now going to trim one inch off the trailing edge of the rudder so the elevator can go up and down. Take a look at the angles cut on the front of the fuselage. They are not accidental, don't change them and put your motor straight. The angles can be explained in the instructions as to why we do it like we do, but it makes the plane fly flat and level. We use two Formica plates on the front so that you have better gripping with your screws and also to keep it from snapping in a hard nose in. Of course, none of you would do that. The elevator and the rudder are now cured. Look how good that goop holds those hinge lines. Very simple, very strong. We're now going to attach the elevator to the back of the fuselage. With a razor blade, cut out a notch for the elevator to fit in. And make sure you have it centered. Don't use too much glue. It's easy to make a plane tail heavy. Very small amount of glue. Press the elevator into place. Make sure it's square. Make sure your elevator is also level with the wing when it sits on your fuselage. The rudder is positioned so it faces straight down the fuselage. And the trailing edge of the rudder is the same as the trailing edge of the elevator. And notice how they can move freely without hitting each other. Make sure they're square. A bead of glue makes them even stronger. We're now going to install the horns. We don't use screws, we just glue them in place. These are fairly tall horns. Make sure that the rudder can move freely when you mount your elevator horn. Cut a slit with an X-Acto knife, just push it up through, then glue it in place, both top and bottom. I like to put a pin in there to keep it uh, perfectly in place while it cools. Now let's do the same thing on the rudder. Get it high enough that it's not going to interfere. I put the rudder horn out one side and the elevator out the other so the rods won't come flipped with each other. Just put a pin in after it's glued. This is the end of part one of two. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoy the plane.